If you want the Miami Dolphins to beat the New York Giants, I want you to go ahead and like this video. And for those of you who are wondering, Mitch, do you really believe in this kind of stuff? Kinda. I mean, the last four preview videos that I've made here around the Dolphins, I have opened it up with saying, like the video for a Dolphins win. I'm just saying, go ahead and like the video. Coming up here on Dolphins today, we're going to be breaking down the Miami Dolphins Week 13 game up against the New York Giants. And when you look at the G-Men, they got a 4-7 and seven record and have actually been playing a little bit better of the past few weeks. The defense especially, I really think, has been able to step up. And then you got the Dolphins, who is crazy. We're 1-7, and seven, now 5-7, and seven, got a lot of that mojo rocking and rolling. This game is going to be going on December 5th, 1 p.m. Eastern time. And this is just going to be one of these dogfight types of games. I mean, look at the over-under in this thing. 41 and a half points. If you think for a second that Vegas doesn't think that this is going to be a low-scoring game, think again. And use this time of the year where I'm like, man, life's too short to bet the under. I think I'm still going to go ahead and bet the under. Now, Miami, they're two and a half point favorites, which I believe has only happened three or two times this entire season where they have been a favorite. So what I want you guys to do, and I'll give you my score prediction at the very end of today's video. Go ahead and predict the score. Miami Dolphins. New York Giants, Miami is a two and a half point favorite. The over under one more time is set at 41 and a half. So for every single one of y'all that come across this video, please, I'm going to be looking in the YouTube comments. Give me your score predictions. And you know what? You might even see your name and score prediction on a future show. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. All right, y'all, it's time now to get into some Dolphins injuries. That We're going to try to keep you guys as up-to-date as humanly possible on this week. Now, obviously, I'm filming this video earlier in the week, and you're going to see injuries change throughout. But some that I just want to keep you up-to-date on, Trill Williams, Adam Shaheen, and Brandon Jones. I'm not 100% sure if uh, Shaheen's going to be able to go. Brandon Jones is probably the one that most of y'all care about. But here's the thing. If anything happens around any three of these players here, we will keep you updated. God forbid if any other injuries end up happening, we will keep you updated. So two things. First, turn on your notifications. There's literally a bell underneath every single video, whether on your laptop, whether on your desktop, whether you still have a Razer cell phone. If you don't know what that is, then you're just way too young. So click that notification bell and then click the sub button. We keep you guys up to date. News, rumors, videos around the Miami Dolphins. And I'll definitely say this. My, my bosses here at Chat Sports have not been very happy with the growth of this channel. I know you guys are really awesome fans, and I know you got a lot of diehards too. So seriously, hit that sub button. We need more subs here. All right, what about some Giants injuries this week? My man Marshall Green, who is another host here at Chat Sports, he was kind of, you know, rubbing it in my face a little bit. That sounds really terrible now that I say that out loud about how the Giants are going to take care of business up against the Dolphins. And when you look at some of these injuries here, I'm like, are you sure? You got a lot of injuries to worry about. Kyle Rudolph, he's uh, he's old, but he's still halfway decent tight end. Sterling Shepard is a receiver that I absolutely love. Curious what he has to say about what's his name leaving Oklahoma to go to USC. Caden Smith, Kadarius Tony, he's just a human joystick. And then Cullen, can't pronounce that last name, but he's a fullback anyway. So what about some keys to victory? Because when you look at a game that's got a 4-7 and seven team going up against a 5-7 and seven team, the over-under is set at 41.5, and, and the fact that Miami is a 2.5-point favorite, it's going to be a close game. My first key to victory for the Dolphins to take down the G-Men Get Tua into rhythm, and I really, really strongly believe that the coaching staff over the past three weeks has done a phenomenal job with that. I mean, he's been 62 of 77, which is, again, 80.5 completion percentage, 661 yards, four total touchdowns, a pick. He's also got a fumble in there, but what's really made him special is he's been really just saying, okay, I'm going to be a game manager. Our defense is playing phenomenal right now. I don't need to do anything special. But if you're completing this many passes and you're winning games, guess what, man? Continue to go ahead and do so. So the holidays, y'all, they are right around the corner. And every single year, my family, we do an ugly Christmas party. And I, I love this kind of stuff. I'm all about family. And this Miami Dolphins Christmas sweater is 72% off. And if you want to get your hands on it, or inside of it, chatsports.com slash Dolphins Xmas. Now, usually it's like $80, but it's like only $22 right now for these crazy, crazy deals going on. If you're like, dude, I'm not going to wear an ugly Christmas sweater, would you wear a Dolphins hat? Because that's also right now our top deal, chatsports.com slash Dolphins hat. 
you can get this thing for under ten dollars the last time that i checked it was nine dollars and twenty cents and it's usually 33 so all i'm saying is that's a hell of a deal chatsports.com slash dolphins hat and please please reminder okay please remember that you got to use promo code Monday. I believe this promo code Monday deal is still going to be going on for Cyber Monday. If it's not, I'm sorry you waited too long. But if it is, use code Monday on orders over $75 because you're going to be able to save an additional 20%. All right, let's go to the next Dolphins key to victory here. Feed Jalen Waddle. And I've been sitting here pounding on the table and saying, like, any way you can get the ball in this young man's hands, you got to do it. Nine grabs, 137 yards, and a touchdown last week up against Carolina. And Carolina had one of the best passing defenses in, in all of football. I mean, they really do. They have a legit secondary. And yet, Waddle is just kind of like, hey, guys, hold my beer. I'm going to run right by you. And the fact that he's just getting targeted as much as he has, I'm okay with it. I Don't get me wrong. I want to see Tua take shots down the field. But if you can hit Waddle and get him into space, He's been able to show me this season that he is just unbelievably dynamic. And one of the issues that the Giants have, they're good at defending the deep ball. Waddle's going to be able to, I really think, have six, seven, eight grabs. And at any point he touches the ball, he can take it to the house. The final key to victory, Miami's defense just needs to keep doing what they're doing. They're getting a lot of pressure, whether it's Jalen Phillips, Ogba, Van Wint. I mean, it doesn't matter. They are getting pressure on the quarterback. And anytime you get pressure... That's just going to be great news for Javon Holland, who had a pick last week and a fumble, uh, forced fumble or fumble recovery. Xavier Howard, he had one. They had a block punt that turned into a touchdown. Defense and special teams is going to take you really far, especially when your offense, the offensive line isn't 100% clicking. But over the last three games, plus three in turnovers. And even Miami's offense has turned it over a little bit. This defense has really stepped up playing almost damn near close to a top 10 overall unit. So here's the thing. When the defense plays smart, they have beaten good teams. And this really goes back to Miami of not doing anything overcomplicated. Not doing anything too, too crazy. Because the Baltimore Ravens, they were a better team. What did they do? They gave Lamar Jackson fits. Came away with a win. The very next week, Tua, 27-33. Played it simple. Defense, played elite. Got a win. The next week, Tua, 27-31. Took it simple, you relied on your defense, and that's what's winning football games. The, the Dolphins' wins are ugly. They really are. But a win is a win in the NFL. Now, after NFL Week 12, because the Monday night football game, as I'm recording this right now, actually hasn't happened. So it's not really going to impact anything that we see on screen. But the division leaders, number one is the Baltimore Ravens after their win. The New England Patriots, they jumped the Tennessee Titans after they took them down, both at 8-4. and four. The Chiefs, 7-4. and four. Bengals, 7-4. and four. Bills, 7-4. and four. And then the Los Angeles Chargers, 6-5 and five after their loss. You can also, excuse me, see that the Raiders and the Broncos, they're 6-5. and five. The Indianapolis Colts are 6-6, six and six, but they are ahead of the Pittsburgh Steelers, who are 5-5-1. Five, five and one. And the Steelers at 5-5-1 five, five and one are actually over the Cleveland Browns due to tiebreakers, despite Cleveland having more wins. Then there's Miami at 5-7. and seven. So teams to root against here in NFL Week 13. I'm just going to warn you, it's not going to be all too likely that every single one of these teams end up losing because you got the Buffalo Bills. They're going to be going up against, actually, they're going up against, it looks like, the New England Patriots, so that's actually a halfway decent game. you got the Denver Broncos, the Las Vegas Raiders. They're going up against the Washington football team. The Broncos, they're going up against Kansas City Chiefs. Indianapolis Colts, well, They've been uh, really rocking and rolling. They're going up against Houston, so I wouldn't say that would be uh, too confident. And then the Pittsburgh Steelers. Steelers, they're going up against the Baltimore Ravens. So plenty of teams to root against. But at the end of the day, Miami has to basically win out. You win out, you go 10-7 and seven and at least give your chance a shot. So what do you all think here? What's the percent chance the Dolphins make the playoffs? So 0 to 100. The last time that I looked, it was 3%. 3% chance for Miami to go ahead and make the playoffs. Now, if they went out, they're still not guaranteed to make it in. If they went out, the percentages, I believe, go up to like 85 87%, somewhere around that number. But please, go ahead. Let me know down in the comments section what's the percent chance the Dolphins make it. I'm going to go ahead, and I'm probably going to sit here with a 5% chance simply because 
if you don't win out, you don't have an opportunity. And winning out in the NFL is so difficult. But the schedule does get a little bit easier. It's how do they do against New England? How do they do up against Tennessee? Because I think every other game, they have a realistic shot to win. Now, earlier on in the video, I said this. I'm going to give you my score prediction for Giants up against the Miami Dolphins. Now, one more time here, the over-under in this one, 41.5 points. Miami is a 2.5 point favorite. The more and more I look at this game, what do I see? I see Daniel Jones, who is a absolute turnover machine, going up against right now one of the hottest defenses and being able to force turnovers. So even though I don't see this one being a very high-scoring game, I'm going to take the Dolphins to win 20 to 17 over the Giants. It could come down to a late-minute field goal. It's just going to be an ugly, old-school type of game where it's just going to come down to a few turnovers here and there. But I want you guys to please let me know, let me know what the score prediction is going to be for this game. I got Dolphins winning this one 20-17 over the Giants. Suck it, Marshall.